Hello, today we're going to talk about resolving a force into a force and a couple. So with this, uh, the first thing we want to talk about is uh, what it means to resolve a force into a force and a couple. Uh, so this is building on what we talked about before with systems being statically equivalent. So we are finding we've got an original force uh, that we're looking at and we've got some equivalent force and couple and usually we do this so we can change the point of application of the force. So we're moving some force over here to some other force over here and we need to add a moment to make sure that those things are statically equivalent to our original situation. Um, so <clears throat> we change the point of application from some original point to some new point uh, and one of the reasons we might want to do this is if we want to sum a bunch of things uh, and we've got forces acting all over the place, we want to bring them into one point uh, and then we can add those forces together. So when we do that, uh, that's what's known as the equivalent force couple system. So we're going to bring all of those forces together into one point, we add them all together, uh, we bring all the moments that are acting about that point, uh, so we're going to end up with uh, moments, those are, that's the couple part of our equivalent force couple system, and um, we sum those up into one value that lets us vastly simplify problems later on. Uh, so that's the eventual reason uh, we're going to do this, but we're going to talk for now just about resolving a single force uh, into one force and one couple that are statically equivalent. So <clears throat> just a reminder, two sets of forces are considered statically equivalent if they cause the same set of reaction forces uh, and moments when applied to the body. So we've got some body, we've got two sets of forces, uh, and with statically equivalent, or the equivalent force couple system, uh, we're not going to be able to tell the difference if we're just looking at those reaction forces or the supports uh, between our original setup and this new setup we're coming up with. Um, so <clears throat> those two sets of forces should be interchangeable, at least in statics, uh, and we're going to use this to replace that, like I said, that complex set of forces with something simpler when we do something like the equivalent force couple system. So here is a situation we might have. Um, so we've got a wrench down here, uh, and I'm applying some force to the end of the wrench, so I'm pushing up on that end, uh, and I might want to know, you know, what is this going to look like from the nut's point of view. Uh, so I've got a, net, a wrench working on a nut, uh, and I might want to figure out, you know, basically I, what I care about is the forces applied to that. So <clears throat> we've got a wrench that's uh, below. We might want to imagine the forces uh, effect on the bolt or the wrench or so the nut um, and to do this we resolve the force into a force and a couple uh, acting about the center and so I, when I say couple here uh, it actually is going to be a set of two forces but we think about that as a moment so let's go through uh, and find the process that we would use to find this equivalent force and moment acting right there where we want the uh, where we want to look at this So to visualize the process of resolving a force into a statically equivalent force and couple, we can imagine the following. So we're going to start by drawing a free body diagram with the original force. Uh, so we've got one force over here, um, and uh, I'm not going to include anything over here for now. And we're going to pick a point that we want to find the equivalent force couple system to act about. So like I said before, uh, I'm going to pick right in the center there. Uh, the center of the nut uh, is going to be where I and looking at the force and couple about. So another important part of this is I'm going to need to figure out these distances from my original force to my point here. And that's going to help me later calculate some moments. So next step is I'm going to imagine drawing in two equal and opposite forces at this point. So these two forces, uh, one's going to be acting in the, with the same magnitude and same direction. So basically I take this force over here and I'm going to bring it over here and one's going to be directly opposite that. So there's my two forces. I've got F and negative F. Uh, and I've essentially, uh, in this whole setup, since I've added two equal and opposite forces acting at the same point, this is kind of like adding zero to an equation. It doesn't really change anything uh, because these two vectors are equal and opposite like that. So I haven't changed this situation, but I've gone from one force to three. Uh, which is making things a little more complicated right now, but you'll see why in a second. So, 
The reason being we do this is two of these forces will form a couple. So if I look at uh, it's negative F over here and the F over here, they are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, uh, and they are not collinear, so they're offset by some degree. Uh, and that's going to exert a moment. It's going to exert the same moment about any point. Um, so we're going to take these two forces, negative F, my original F over here, and we're going to redraw that as a moment. Um, so this is going to leave us with a single force, this F down here, uh, as well as a moment. So I, take, I get rid of those two forces, uh, that's a couple, and I'm going to redraw that couple as a moment. And so now I've gone from my original force, which was acting over there, to a force that's acting at this point right here, uh, and this moment from the couple is going to be acting about that point, uh, but really it's going to be the same moment everywhere. So with that, that's kind of the formal way to think about the equivalent force couple system. We add those two forces, suddenly we have a couple, uh, and then we replace that couple with a moment like this. There is a shortcut to this whole thing. So the for the equivalent force couple system, uh, in the end, uh, you know, I've got this point over here, and I want this FEQ and MEQ. Um, <clears throat> the force, this original force over here, is going to be the same as FEQ. So moving one force from one point to another, we don't change the force. Uh, we're really simply adding a magnitude, and so the or adding the moment. Uh, so the magnitude of this couple or the pure moment uh, is also going to be equal to the moment that this force F over here exerts about our point. So <clears throat> again, kind of the shortcut to all of this: the original F is going to be the same as FEQ, uh, and this MEQ or the couple exerted in this force couple system uh, is going to be equal to the magnitude of the moment exerted by that force over there. So if I can calculate those two things, I can kind of get to my answer a lot quicker rather than drawing in those equal and opposite forces. Uh, and that gives you two ways to look for the equivalent, or sorry, the, uh, resolve a single force into a force in a couple about a different point. Uh, so with that, um, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.